Good day. Welcome to another Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Today, it's all about job creation and how this will fuel the government's economic growth plan. Stay with us. We kick things off with the news. Caribe Development Fund has been helping to transform the Jamaican landscape for over nine years, expanding our roadways, modernizing our airports, facilitating the creation of jobs and providing academic scholarships, reshaping communities and improving sanitation facilities. The Petro Caribe Development Fund, moving beyond energy security. To find out more about the fund, call 960-9110 or visit their website, petrocaribejm.org. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, September 9. St. James residents will be travelling on smoother surfaces along the Mocha to Arcadia Roadway within another four months. Transport and Work State Minister Richard Azan signed an $83.9 million contract with S&G Road Surfacing Materials Limited last Friday to repair the 7.4-kilometer roadway. The project is being financed by the Tourism Enhancement Fund and includes a double layer of asphalt as well as repairs and construction of several drains to channel water off the roadway. It will be easier, ladies and gentlemen, for those who have to use the community for business and the farming community that you can be able to travel much more comfortable on this road. Also, it will be easier for the police to be able to come into your community to patrol and for the community members to work together with along with the police. Tourism Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil says the rehabilitation exercise will also enhance tourism activities in adjoining communities. The better the road, the more visitors they're going to see. Not true? And not only that, but this piece of road is bringing visitors from Montego Bay and from Falmouth. And you can get visitors from the cruise ship in Montego Bay and the hotels as well. So it is an important piece of road. In the wake of this weekend's 10th anniversary Petra Caribe Summit, Energy Minister Philip Powell says cooperation under the program will be strengthened in four key areas over the next 10 years. Among them, expanding travel and trade opportunities to push products like fertilizer and other products among member states. Cooperation in the areas of renewables and energy diversification are also top priorities. The resolve remains strong and true. The lessons of Petro Carib remain indelible and its responsiveness to the challenges of change remain absolute. The Energy Minister says two projects now before the Petro Caribe Secretariat are the upgrading of the Petrojam oil refinery and the completion of the rural electrification program. Over $50 million is coming from the Education Ministry to carry out a suite of positive behavior modification programs for the 2015-2016 academic year. Portfolio Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites made the announcement at a recent behavior management breakfast meeting. The measures to effect positive behavior modification in our society, in our schools, show variation according to needs, uh, not one size will fit all. It is vital that we make up for the extraordinary amount of wasted time and effort that uh, is occasioned because of maladaptive behavior. The programs will fall under the school-wide Positive Behavior Intervention Support Initiative. Meanwhile, 115 principals from selected early childhood institutions in Kingston and St. Andrews Region 1 are now certified under the Respect Agenda campaign. The principals were certified in the Parental Values and Attitude Promotion Program. The training that you have received and the contagion which I expect you will carry out with your teachers and with others with whom you interact is the beginning, the proliferation of what I hope to be a national movement. The principals were trained by the Early Childhood Commission. Other Region 1 principals will be trained between September and November, while principals elsewhere across the island are to be trained at a later date. Government is offering tangible support to the people of Dominica 
in the wake of the devastation caused by Tropical Storm Erica. During last week's Jamaica House media briefing in Montego Bay, Information Minister Senator Sandria Fortner said key state agencies had met to assess Dominica's immediate needs and the extent of Jamaica's contribution. The government of Jamaica has so far pledged 100,000 US dollars, two Bailey Bridges, and technical expertise in the areas of health and engineering if this is required. She said the health ministry was also continuing consultations with the Pan American Health Organization on the extent of medical assistance needed by Dominica. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, meanwhile, has spoken with Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt and expressed deep sympathies for the loss of life and property. She told the Prime Minister that Jamaica stands in solidarity with the people of Dominica to assist in any way possible with the rehabilitation and other efforts to restore normalcy to the island. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller has congratulated Trinidad and Tobago's new Prime Minister-elect, Dr. Keith Rowley, on his general election victory Monday night. In a statement on Tuesday, Mrs. Simpson Miller welcomed Dr. Rowley to the helm of government leadership within CARICOM. She said Jamaica was looking forward to working with the new Trinidad and Tobago government in a continuing atmosphere of bilateral and multilateral cooperation. Mrs. Simpson Miller also commended the people of the Twin Island State for the mature exercise of their democratic right in the best traditions of the Caribbean. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching. Fever, rash, joint pain, and red eyes. All common signs of the Zika virus or ZikV. Symptoms are usually mild, lasting anywhere from a few days to a week. Jamaica has no Zika cases, but if it gets hair, it would only be transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Don't give Zika a chance. Prevent the breeding of these pesky mosquitoes. The use of oil, cooking oil, a little tip of cooking oil poured on the surface of the water suffocates the larvae and prevents them hatching out. So persons can do that. Jamaica has been an active player within the export market for a number of years. The government is preparing to increase the country's participation in this area through National Export Strategy 2. We're going to be hearing about that and how the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation is assisting the youth within the municipality to create sustainable business opportunities. We review all this in strategic priority number two, economic growth and job creation. In order that Jamaica's participation in global trade can significantly improve the lives of the Jamaican people, it is important for us to consistently strengthen our export capacity through a major and deliberate strategy. And that is where the National Export Strategy comes into play. Phase 2 was launched in August to broaden and improve the environment for business and trade. Achieving the growth we need will require that we activate dormant exporters, expand our production base, and encourage new entrepreneurs in the export sector. The end goal? Economic growth and job creation. I believe we all agree that an increase in exports presents the most viable option for rapid GDP growth and increased investor confidence in our country. And this confidence is growing. Just recently, the Agriculture Ministry, farmers, exporters, and a contingent from the United States met to finalize trade exports. And the National Export Strategy too will take that further as it focuses on key sectors such as manufacturing, mining, film and animation, agro-processing and information technology-enabled services. We have no choice but to fully integrate our economy into global value chains for the production and delivery of goods and services around the world. This will make the Jamaican economy more open for investments and better ready for increased exports. Indeed, one of the main advantages of NES2 is the deliberate attempt 
to clearly identify the owners and stakeholders of each export initiative and the development of a system to ensure ongoing communication to facilitate monitoring and evaluation of its implementation. NEST 2 will run from 2015 to 2019, continuing the platform that was set from Phase 1 between 2009 and 2013. For the next four years, NEST 2 will continue to increase the country's export capacity to improve our trade performance. The government is committed to creating the enabling environment to support your success because your success is Jamaica's success. We are on a course. We have to continue on this course in the interest of Jamaica's economy, and more so to the benefit of our people. Tied to the growth agenda is employment. And the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, KSAC, is facilitating that through its Enterprise Assistance Program. In February 2015, the corporation launched its $2 million program for assisting young people to start or develop their own micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, which will facilitate employment. The aim is to create sustainable economic activities that will benefit the residents of the municipality. The beneficiaries are between the ages of 18 and 29. We decided to support this group as we recognize that they face significant challenges when it comes to finding employment. The financial assistance took the form of three grants. The first, a wage incentive. And that is five grants of up to $130,000 each. The wage incentives will be offered to businesses, up with businesses with up to 10 employees, who see the potential of employing young persons between the ages of 18 and 29. The second is startup grants, targeting the same age group. These grants of up to 50,000 will, um, uh, will help applicants who have a viable business idea and just need that extra financial support to launch their business. And people who need assistance to take their business to the next level benefited from the business development grant. Seven of these grants, valued at up to $100,000, were disbursed to help with the expansion, diversification, and growth of businesses. In June 2015, six aspiring entrepreneurs were awarded a combined $430,000 in grants across the three areas. Their business interests range from farming to internet and printing services. By utilizing this program, persons can benefit from training, guidance and mentorship which will allow these businesses to learn from successful established business owners and business advisors 22 businesses will benefit directly from the program with another 10 or 15 local businesses expected to be contracted by successful applicants for the supply of goods and services the ksac enterprise assistance program is a key component of the local economic development program of the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. So as government strengthens the export platform through policies and programs and enables growth in businesses, we can expect an increase in jobs and growth in the country's economic performance. I say be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Mind what you say to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect that your child has been sexually abused, or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counselor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process 
and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred. If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused, we encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions and to seek guidance in terms of, do I speak to the police about this? Which we always say you have to, because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter. And it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need, and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips, and of course, any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134, or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to me, sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. Startup Jamaica is assisting owners of technologically driven enterprises to master their craft and become world leaders in their field. In our next feature, we see how this facility is being used for job creation. Putting a business plan to paper and seeking equity funding is not that simple for young tech entrepreneurs aspiring to make it big but government has made that possible. Through Startup Jamaica, app developers representing 60 companies were taken through a vigorous bootcamp to test the viability of their products. From there, 10 were selected to go onto an accelerator program to further advance their products for financing, marketing, and business potential locally and overseas. And then it was time to steal the deal. What we're trying to do here is to take young Jamaicans who have great ideas, who are extremely talented, but who need mentorship, business guidance, support, and access to capital, and provide them with those opportunities so that they can convert ideas into businesses. And the business it has become for the first set of companies coming out of Startup Jamaica. We focus on three today, Rebel Farm, CrimeBot, and The Vine List. All have secured equity funding of 30,000 US dollars from Oasis 500 in Jordan. It shows that there is value in what you're doing and people actually see value, but at the same time it lets you know that you are now responsible for the growth of your company as there are external people involved though. It's not just in your head anymore, it's actually happening for real. This is going to be a great opportunity, first of all, because um, this is the first round of investment. And so in terms of demonstrating uh, to others, uh, especially for later uh, capital injections or later uh, you know, follow-on capital coming into the company, this is a demonstration of value. Somebody has taken the first step to invest in you. A key partner in Startup Jamaica, the World Bank has been making contact with companies and getting them on board. It feels great to have someone who on board outside of our current ecosystem who believes also believes in the product and we look forward to what they can do for us and what we can learn from them. Participants receive half of the investment in cash to support their businesses. The remainder comes in the form of training, mentorship and technical support to get their companies ready for the global stage. That takes place in Jordan between April and July 2015 during a 100-day accelerator program with the participants. We are very excited to go and learn and not only bring back investment, which is very good, but also to bring back capital, that's mental capital, that we can assist other startups in bringing their companies to the level that we have been. Now, this 100 days uh, program will really equip them and uh, with world-class uh, uh, tools uh, 
and, and uh, experiences uh, to be able to then go in front of larger investors and really pitch the idea for uh, a much uh, a bigger product and service that, that you know, whatever they're working on uh, to, to be able to access uh, scalable opportunities uh, on a global uh, level. Oasis has a very high success rate where 80% of those who go through their acceleration process get follow-on funding because they work within the entrepreneurs to refine the ideas so that they are business ready and investment ready. The apps developed by these young entrepreneurs will offer solutions to our everyday lives. Our intent is to eradicate crime or even bring it to its lowest point. And to do so without fear, using the CrimeBot platform to report crime and remain unidentified. As for farmers... Our app will first give them a planting season tool that they'll be able to use. So this tool will be able to look at the weather, the soil type, and the marketability of the crop they're about to plant. And this tool will advise them on that. And if you don't know where to find that particular item you want, don't worry. What we did was, is we built something that allowed someone to pretty much post the products they're looking for specifically and we made that accessible to merchants. Their foundations were laid at Digital Jam 3.0 Caribbean Edition, hosted by the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining. CrimeBot emerged the overall winner. The feeling is, is unbelievable. It's, it's, it's rare that we get a chance to actually make a difference. And the win tells us that we can make a difference. And going forward, you know, it just means that our next step is to do many things. Um, start here in Jamaica, which is where we actually started the platform, and try to expand to the Caribbean, and then further across the world if possible. And that's really the, the limit of CrimeBot, the world. That was March 2014. Now, fast forward to 2015. The team is once again reaping success through government's entrepreneur building initiative, Startup Jamaica, and commended the program. What they're doing is highly important because ideas are here and the persons who have the ideas don't necessarily have what it takes to get it to market. So them facilitating uh, this through Startup Jamaica will, I mean, the, the gains will be uh, exceptional in the, long, in the long term. I mean, ideas that would be on paper will now become products. So it's a great program and hopefully continues. It's very important. Capital is, is a very big deal and for a company that's not this traditional to Jamaica, it's very hard to find people who are willing to invest. So when you do get that capital, it helps to push you forward and help you take the next step that's necessary to growing a young company. It is a very good idea and it is something that is very needed because in Jamaica here, we have a lot of brilliant minds. Persons who are developers like myself, who are looking for opportunities to assist, assist them business-wise and also to assist them in projecting themselves so that they can become more attractive and so that they can grow from being an idea to being a product and become profitable. So I think it's a very good thing. These are the trailblazers charting the course for others that will follow. And the government is right there, putting them in contact with partners to make reality of their business ideas. The role that technology is playing in today's economy has significantly change the way that we do work. Work processes are significantly more complex and technical in their features and that begs for persons who are engaged in work to be more technically oriented and that is where I believe skills training comes in. In order to perform these tasks one needs to be a little more attuned to the technical capabilities that are required. Now, these capabilities can be acquired over time through a sustained process of engagement in training. And this could be on the job or in other places such as institutions within the Heart Trust NT, for example, where our specialization is in vocational skills. Um, our core competences really lie in TVET, 
technical vocational education and training. And TVET equips one with the requisite knowledge, skills, and attitudes that workplaces nowadays require one to really perform optimally. And I think this extends even further to persons who might be engaged in tertiary training. Also, whether you have an academic um, qualification, whether it be a diploma or a degree, skills training can enhance your chances of gaining employment. Why is that so? Nowadays, employers are seeking to engage persons who have demonstrated the ability to do. For further information on the skills training opportunities available through the Heart Trust NTA, contact your regional and parish offices. From researchers to curators, librarians to musicologists, all are part of the intricate workforce at the Institute of Jamaica, IOJ, which has seven separate divisions that are responsible for the teaching, researching, and preserving of our Jamaican culture. And guess what? Their doors are always open to welcome you. Welcome to the Institute of Jamaica. This 135-year-old institution is an agency of the Ministry of Youth and Culture. Its foremost task is to establish and manage Jamaica's museums and galleries, among them the newly renamed National Museum of Jamaica, the Natural History Museum of Jamaica, Liberty Hall, the People's Museum, Jamaica Music Museum, the National Gallery of Jamaica and the African Caribbean Institute of Jamaica or the Jamaica Memory Bank. We also have a museum in Hanover. We have a museum at Fort Charles in Port Royal. And we are about to open the National Museum Jamaica West in the Montego Bay Cultural Center, which was formerly the Montego Bay Civic Center. The Program Coordination Division operates the junior centers, focusing primarily on developing the cultural and other arts development of young children. And importantly, IOJ oversees the collection, preservation and display of artifacts for our education and enjoyment. We think a lot of people don't really know that we have a lot of treasures here at the Institute. We have about 17,000 artifacts in the National Collection that is under the management of the National Museum Jamaica. The National Gallery has several permanent galleries. We have a collection of Taino artifacts at the National Museum Jamaica. We have a collection of musical instruments and very important artifacts for our Jamaica Music Museum collection. We are trying to encourage people to see the museum as a very important resource, not just of history, but to help us to understand who we are as a people and to help us to chart our way um, forward as a people. That's our show for today. Join us tomorrow, same place, same time. To stay in the know, you can review this and other programs on the JIS website at jis.gov.jm or on our YouTube channel. Keep sending your feedback using our Facebook and Twitter pages. And for information at your fingertips, check out the JIS News app for your smartphone in the Google Play Store. I'm Theodore Henry. On behalf of the dedicated production team here at the JIS, I remind you, to do something today that your future self will thank you for. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.